the story of how Pamela Anderson became famous is pretty incredible. So in 1989, Pam is 21 years old when she goes to a football game in Canada, which is where she's from. While she's in the stands, all of the sudden, she says the cameraman for the Jumbotron zooms in on her and suddenly she sees herself broadcast on this giant screen in the arena. I looked up at the big screen and there was 50,000 people and there was my head, huge. And everyone was yelling, it was really bizarre. Well, the stadium went crazy when they saw her When well, they saw her head, yes. It might have also had something to do with the fact that Pam was wearing a form-fitting crop top t-shirt featuring one of Canada's most popular beers called Labatt's Blue. Now Pam says that after all of this happens, that beer company Labatt's gets in touch with her because they want to do a commercial with her for their famous beverage and Pam also ends up being featured on a poster advertising their brand. Pam says that is how the popular adult magazine Playboy first learned about her. Playboy found me through that. Playboy and saw the ad and called he, you. And huh? called me and said they wanted me to do a cover. Which kicks off her acting career. And it just happened. I went to a football game and kind of got discovered there. Came down to Playboy and I just haven't left. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> the band. Wow. Wow. I know. Wow. I know. wow. <laughs> But even though Pam makes it seem like her rise to fame was this crazy coincidence, there is this photographer named David Sarita who says he used to work with Pam back in the day, and he claims her discovery story didn't quite go down like that. He says that Pam's boyfriend at the time actually created that beer poster of Pam before the football game ever happened, suggesting that there was some serious strategy going on behind the scenes. Now, the guy who made these accusations, questioning Pam's version of events, does give me some concerns about his credibility, seeing as he's written a book called Face to Face with Jesus Christ, and here he is speaking at the International UFO Congress about reverse engineering alien technology. I wish we could abduct all the members of Obama's Congress and make them come to the UFO Congress for the full week, and then they'll know the truth. And that's why the UFOs are all in Mexico. So yeah, there's a good chance that David's claims about Pam are low whack, right? But his accusations are not the only potential holes in her discovery story. Another inconsistency is that in a couple interviews, Pam says she went to this football game with her neighbors. But in this Playboy documentary, and that is a term that I use lightly, Pam said she went to the game with her roommate, not her neighbors, according to IMDb. Another little snag in the story is that Pam says that Playboy found out about her through those Labatt Spear promotions and that they called her before she appeared in their magazine. But I found several reports that it was Pam who reached out to Playboy first after a photographer took pictures of her and then sent them to Playboy at her request. This documentary about Pam's life is one of the sources that claims that, and it also lists Pamela Anderson as the copyright owner of this film, so I'm assuming she approved the script. So what, but what you want to do before Close Playboy? Out. I just, I really had, I just got out of You're the little girl, school. you want to, I want to be in Playboy someday. Yes. I did, I did. <laughs> Well, good I just for to you. Naked and get paid. You just, you just wanted to get naked and get paid? <laughs> You've been watching an excerpt from my video on the savage scammer behind the release of Pam and Tommy's honeymoon tape. And there is so much more to this story, so if you want to see the full video, you can find that link down in the description, or you can search YouTube for Pam and Tommy by Mary Betsy.